Hello, this is Pibble Pusher, and for Halloween 2023, in grandstanding tradition, I'm doing a spooky, scary session for my players. We're going with a ghosts and ghouls theme, including a full graveyard with mausoleum. We did the graves last time, and this time I'll be showing you how to make the mausoleum. Let's get started. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with the basic structure of our mausoleum. I looked up a few builds and figured about 20 foot by 20 foot was about right. So each wall piece is four inches by two and a half inches. And of course you want four of those. I used ready board for this build, which you can pick up usually at the local dollar store. And you can definitely use a knife and ruler for this. I just had a prox on, so I found it easier. For the end pieces of the roof, I had some leftover foam from my uh, wall cuttings. So it's four inches long by about an inch, an inch and change tall. And if you find the center line and cut directly to the corners, you should get a nice slope for your roof. And of course, you'll be wanting two of those pieces front and back. On your wall pieces, you're gonna wanna draw brickwork. I suggest using a ruler for your horizontal lines and freehanding with a ballpoint pen to do your vertical lines, including some cracks in there as well, just to add some authenticity. If you widen your vertical cracks at the top and the bottom, it helps give it a more weathered look as well. Then you can use balled up tin foil to add texture to both the outside of your walls and your end roof pieces. This is a great time to do any accents or detailing what you want to do. So I've cut out two windows per side, a diamond to go on the front as a bit of a family crest, a door, and then also a door arch just to give it a little bit more depth. For the roof, I went with a four and a half inch long, two and a half inch tall piece, but compare it to your own and see what fits best. And then I used a ballpoint pen to draw on the texture I wanted. There are lots of ways to do this. So this is just my favorite. Then you can start gluing together your piece. I used hot glue. I recommend doing the four walls first. Then we're going to add some accent columns. Then we're going to do the roof. We can also glue on our accent pieces here and cut windows. Four columns, get a piece of corrugated cardboard, peel off one side, roll them so the corrugations are facing outwards, and glue them into a tube. To complete our columns, we're going to want accents on the top and bottom. So to do that, I made little squares of foam and then cut out segments so that you wound up with a stacked look. You can also do this by cutting a smaller and larger piece and gluing them together, but I was enjoying playing around with it, so this is the method I went with. To attach the columns to the build, I started out by just attaching the cardboard with hot glue to each corner, trying to hide the seam of the cardboard tube by putting it against one, one side. Then I cut out a little piece of each accent um, so that it fit flush to the wall and then glued those in place as well. I did have to cut down the height of my cardboard tubes to make sure that they didn't get in the way of the roof. So do be very conscientious of that while you're building as well. You'll want to hot glue your roof on next. I do recommend cutting the edges of your roof at 45 degree angle so they meet cleanly in the center and at the sides of your building. I just found that really helped to make a clean look and to make it so you weren't struggling to get the corners to look normal and natural. So for me, something that's quintessentially mausoleum-ish is the accents that you often see along the roof line. So I freehanded mine because I am lazy, but I just did some four inch long pieces that had sort of spikes on the top and then glued those on top of the columns along the roof line. And I actually really like how it turned out. As always, our next step is our black Mod Podge layer. This helps to add structure. This gives us a nice dark base coat. It's generally just a great idea. Also, if you have any bits that aren't very well glued, it just solidifies them in. And then once it's dry, you can start painting directly on top of this and it just really finishes the whole thing nicely. I wanted most of my mausoleum to look quite natural and stony. So I went with a dark gray for the base coat on the main thing. 
I did black around the windows and the door frame. The columns is black as well. And then a reddish on the roof to make kind of a tile look. To dry brush, I went in with a tan on the doors, a lighter gray, a little bit of brown, and then a white on the stone, and then just a little bit of white dry brushing on the black as well on the columns, just to kind of make them look a bit weathered. The roof, I did a slightly brighter red and a white, and I called it done. Now I started doing this way earlier in the build and wound up pulling them off and putting them on at the end. So this is why it looks a, a little naked in the video. But basically I used white glue to attach tissue paper inside the windows. And that's why I could put lights inside to really make it look more eerie. So here we have the finished result. I really like how this turned out. It's a little wonky in places because I was trying to go very fast, having the Halloween deadline and all that but I'm still very happy with it. If you want to see the full written out build, please do visit my blog at pibblepusher.ca. Thanks so much and happy crafting.